Hey guys, welcome back. As you can probably see and hear, it's uh, pretty bloody wet out here. <laughs> it's raining a lot more than I thought it was going to. Um, I've got quite a lot to do, unfortunately. And I'll have to do most of it in the rain by the looks of it. So, um, I need to put a tarp up, is really the first thing I've got to do. Um, get some shelter to put my bag under and stuff. I haven't got that much with me, really. Um, plans for like a raised bed and stuff. <laughs> and yeah, I suppose I better start putting that tarp up. It's very far from a good job, but the tarp is up. Uh, hopefully I can fettle with it, maybe the rain will ease off a bit, but it's already pooling on the top here. <laughs> I was not expecting it to be this bad today. I suppose I should have expected it, it's been pretty wet lately. Oi! Right, I could try and dry some stuff off, including the camera and the saw. I had to get the saw out quickly, it was buried in the blanket and everything um, for cutting the poles for my kind of warning here. Wow. Well, I've got a, a lot of clearing to do here. There's holly shoots all around I need to get rid of, fallen logs and stuff. Um, I need to clear so I can build my um, raised bed and um, put this tarp out properly. Um, now today's video is actually sponsored by BPS Knives. Now you've seen me use these in a lot of videos in the uh, past, Ukrainian Knife Company. And uh, yeah, they reached out to me to sponsor a video. So to find out what they can do and how you can actually get hold of one for free, watch the video. And they're going to come in handy for getting rid of some of this holly. <laughs> Now all this birch here is rotten and I can just pull off a lot of that bark, stick it in my pocket and hopefully dry it off a bit before tonight. The shelter's a bit better now. It's got a bit of a dip in it that's catching water because of the angle of the um, tree that I'm under, the dead tree. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll probably dip one corner later. But I think I've got to carry on clearing under here in order to uh, do a bit of a raised bed, get me off this wet floor. I've only got this uh, foam closed cell mat thing. What am I doing? Well, it stopped raining. <laughs> I'll tell you why. It's the next day. 
I was getting hammered with that rain. A lot of my gear was wet, um, my jacket was wet, my trousers were wet through. Um, more importantly, the main reason was the camera was just getting soaked. It was just getting really hard to film. It probably would have been almost impossible to have a campfire, uh, let alone film it for you guys to see. So I just made the decision just to bug out um, and go home, dry some stuff out. Though I did leave my jacket in the truck overnight, so that's still wet. <laughs> but um, yeah, I dipped one corner of the tarp there for runoff and um, yeah, just grabbed my stuff and went. Um, so far, it's pretty nice today actually. It's colder, um, which is why well, it's a shame my jacket's still wet. Hopefully my hat inside is uh, still in there. Um, yeah, yeah, so sorry about that, bit of a disjointed video, but I wanted to come back and sort of carry on. I had some plans and uh, I want to get on with them really. Um, brought over the start of my raised bed here, so I'm going to carry on with that and just get down to it. Oh, well I've got the longer posts, I just need some shorter ones. These are actually peeled chestnut and they're little ways to walk in but um, I know the person who coppiced this wood and I have permission to be in this particular woodland. So if you see coppiced wood piled up, you know, don't touch it. <laughs> There's someone's living. But yeah, a couple more to go. Well, the first thing I've got to do here is lift up the tarp again. That's the frame put in. You just need to put in some supports now, stop it moving around. Then I can cut some slats for the top. As you can see I've just done them in diagonals, if this was a more permanent shelter it would be four on each side but this still keeps everything from moving.
got quite a lot of give to it actually. Don't mind this. Just got enough for a seat right now. I need to go find some more dead wood or dead standing. Oh, I can see some good straight ones from here actually. Take them down and uh, finish the bed. Whew. Feel a, a bit rushed on these short days and I can hear gunfire. <laughs> it's uh, right over there. They're not coming for me. But yeah, so far so good. Oh, don't worry if uh, you want to see more rain, there will be more later. It's due um, after dark and, uh, well, I think it's going to be very heavy by morning, like extremely, like the beginning of this video, so that should be interesting. <laughs> That's the bed pretty much done. Might add a couple more bits as I process firewood. But uh, right now I want to try out one of these knives. And um, over the other side of the woodland there is um, chestnut coppice. I'm right in the depths of it here. It's uh, hard to get in and out for the holly around. But yeah, I need to go over there, take one piece of green wood, which is not something I do very often, just when I need to. And that's to make a torch. So this is chestnut coppice, as you might be able to see from the leaves, and you can see this is about two years old, something like that. You can see where it's all sprouting out from when it was last cut, um, usually cut between 20, 30 years, I think, something like that. So I'm just going to take one piece um, to make my torch, because that needs to be green wood, and uh, get it back to camp. This is the B1 camping knife by BPS. Got a walnut handle with Danish oil, high carbon steel blade and a nice Scandi grind, as us bushcrafters like. So I'm gonna use this to take off some of the smaller shoots on that uh, piece of chestnut. just need to bevel off the edge on this so when I bang it in the ground it doesn't splay apart. So sharp <laughs> compared to my other knife. Just got to find a good spot to actually put it in without stones now. Now in all honesty, I should have done this before I sharpened one end, <laughs> but we'll see how this goes. Just split that down. And in the other direction as well. Now although there probably is fat wood in this woodland as there is pine, I've actually brought some with me, um, some nice pieces actually, and uh, figuring I'm going to cut them down with the saw first, which ain't great for the saw blade, and then uh, split them with the knife. Now that knife is up here, keeping it splayed apart. I've got the Adventure Camping Knife with me, which has the ferro rod on it, also BPS obviously. And uh, I actually already have one of these. Now I have two. 
and if you want one keep watching <laughs> so I'm just going to split these down to a smaller size so they slot in nicely now I'm going to attempt to uh, slot them in alternating the directions it's the knife freed up so let's push that down and then we go with the other direction back with that way and so forth there we go that's my fatwood torch I've tried one of these before with resin, pine resin and it just dripped all over the place. I'm sure this will drip a little. Shouldn't matter too much, the uh, floor is sodden wet. But uh, yeah, bit of fun, bit of a trial. Never done one quite like this. Wow, it's getting pretty windy. <laughs> wow, that's probably blowing in that rain again. So the uh, regulars amongst you will know that I've been using the BPS knives on and off for a little while now and um, putting through their paces, battening, um, preparing food, building shelters and all of that and I love them, they're really good and they're really good value for money I used to use my Condor Bush Law which I think I kind of lucked out on because everyone else I've spoken to says that um, there's the hardness on theirs just hasn't been treated properly but uh, BPS knives are started by true enthusiasts and do everything in-house the blades, the handles, everything you can even buy these in kit forms and everything too they are very competitively priced um, and a Ukrainian company as well so great to support them guys these are just two of many knives they do they've got neck knives, skinny knives, all of that business as well um, even ones for sort of camp cookery and stuff love the sheaves and love the ferro rod comes with this one, this one is kind of my go-to the adventure knife like I said, I've put them through their paces and they've really held up. Um, so really happy that they reached out to me to work on a video together. And just as happy they've offered to give one of these away to one of you guys. Now I just want you to put a comment and just say I'm in, basically. That's it, just I'm in. And uh, we'll randomly select someone and BPS will send to you. Um, they've got a worldwide website. Um, they sell through Amazon in the US. And I just noticed on an email they actually sell through the Bushcraft store here in the UK. Um, and they're pretty renowned for selling quality gear as well. So yeah, say I'm in and you could have one of these lovely knives. Now you'll be seeing me using these a lot more later on and in the morning as well, I'm sure. Uh, but for now I need to make a fire reflector. Um, bit of a wind coming from this direction through the route I uh, walk out of this kind of undergrowth and um, then it's firewood duty probably going to need quite a lot <laughs> we'll see how I go I did see a dead tree down that way which might go a long way towards it oh there's more gunfire <laughs> I think I'm going to put my reflector here Right, that's them now tied together. Holds that nice and solid. Oh. Should help protect the uh, fire reflector a bit. It's all starting to look a bit more homely now, isn't it? Well, this is one of them trees I was talking about. A bit 
hung up. It might just come out of the ground, we'll see. Timber! <laughs> Just need to make this a bit more manageable. <laughs> it's a bit big in camp here. Time to fill up the lantern, I think. These usually need an hour to soak the wick. I like to get it done early. I've got quite a lot of paraffin here because I've only got the one lantern with me because I'm doing the torch. That should probably be enough. I suppose I should set up the bed. Well, it's still a little bit damp from yesterday in there. Give it a chance to dry out a little. Okay, I've got my wool blanket and my canvas. I don't know what you want to call it, really multi-purpose. That extra bounce of the raised bed, that's not too bad actually. It's been a while since I've been on just a um, foam mat. Used to it a lot in the old uh, lean-to shelter. Ooh, <laughs> I think I've got some wood stashed in a clearing over there somewhere from when I was here last. So I'm gonna go look for that. Though I've got quite a lot from that one tree. And I'm nearly set up. They're still shooting over there somewhere. Yeah, looking pretty good accomplished quite a lot. I've kicked down the um, supports for the front of the tarp probably about three times <laughs> and yanked the pegs out but uh, we're good, we're good. Once I'm settled I won't be going in and out, in and out, in and out so much. Looking nice. There is going to be no dry twigs around so I'm going to have to batten a few small pieces to get the fire going. Seeing as I have the fat wood with me, I may as well process it down to light the fire tonight. Um, this was on the ground, it's just been trodden in, trodden in, trodden in. Makes no difference at all to fat wood, it's great stuff. So we'll test out the uh, sharpness of the spine on this just by shaving it. Need a flatter edge to start this off. There we go. Lovely. Now I'm just going to get some slightly bigger curls which will hold the flame longer. Just run that scanty edge along the fatwood. Get some nice shavings.
I've got my fatwood prepped. Uh, dried out the birch bark yesterday. You could say that's cheating, but it is what it is with this trip. And uh, as we're in chestnut kind of woodland, scattered around anyway, I've got some chestnuts. It is beautiful out here. You can actually see the sun coming straight through there and catching me. You can see that orange glow. You can also see it up in the trees as well, just as the sun's going down past the tree line. It's good to see autumn in full effect. Best season, apart from when the clocks change. <laughs> Such a short day. Well, you know, long evening. But um, pretty much set up now. I'm just going to wait a little while to light the fire. I think I'm going to do my chestnuts while I um, wait and then do my steak. Something to nibble on. Oh, I've achieved quite a lot. I'm going to use my X boil just to do a quick brew before I light the fire. Oh, if I can get the lid off. Hands are slippery. This is uh, Meth's spirits. It's not paraffin, <laughs> it's a different bottle. Saturate that. Put that in there. And I don't need these because I'm using a kettle. This is my new Kapilka Kuxa, which was a birthday present. That's why you didn't get a video last week. <laughs> Just going to let this burn out. Um, it does retain the fuel, but I didn't put much in there. Oh, that's nice. Went to put my hat on, but where it's been in my wet coat, it's soaked through. I have to dry that out by the fire so I can wear it tonight. I've actually got, I didn't mention, because I've got this wool blanket, I've also got like a really small summer sleeping bag, uh, just if I need it to take the edge off. I always get a little nervous with just a wool blanket, which I've done before, but yeah, it's just a tiny one. <sighs> right, I can chill for half hour before I light the fire. Okay, I'm getting cold. <laughs> I'm gonna light this thing. Uh, use the ferro rod, come with the knife. Just take that kind of coating off. And this should light quite easy. Like so. I'll get some of my birch bark straight on there. Probably have some kind of brace here. Ooh. And on with my kindling. It took a minute, but it's definitely going now. I'm pretty happy to leave that for a little while. Get my lantern on. I suppose I should light my torch and just to see how long it lasts. I think I'll just use my bushcraft lighter for the lantern. <laughs> I think if I light it from the bottom it will go quick, if I light it from the top you'd think it would burn down. So I think I'm going to go upper middle. Uh, 
I'm just going to use the lighter, my pink lighter. I suppose I should do it on both sides. A nice piece of oak to go on there as well. It went out so I lit it a bit lower and that seems to be the key. I don't see it lasting all that long to be honest. Time to prep my chestnuts. Just going to put a bit of a cross in them, make them a bit easier when they're done. I've seen little mechanical machines you can make with a blade in to do this very easily. I'm tempted to make one one day. Time to put my fire anchor on. So it's going to have to go about here. Put my chestnuts on the grill. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Looking forward to them. I've not had any chestnuts yet this year. And I love them. You just don't get the vendors anymore. I was up London the other day and I used to have loads. The last time I had some from a vendor, street vendor, was um, in Switzerland years ago, like 10, 15 years ago. So yeah, looking forward to these. And feeling quite cosy. I should have brought the bed forwards a tiny bit, but then we risk the water coming in, though we'll dip aside tonight. Just because this is right where my head is. <laughs> and you can't sit right on the edge because all the boards have come up. Got to move these about a bit. Uh -huh. Got one beer with me today, and it's a Camden Hells. Just happened to have them. Cheers, everyone. Refreshing. I'm still quite warm because I've just been doing, 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 so I don't really need the jacket at the moment. That's a point, I need to put it on the fire reflector to try it out along with my hat. Oh yes. Ah, so far pretty successful considering yesterday's start. That's probably, god, the third ever camp I've had to abandon. One was because of medical things out of my control as a lot of you will remember another one the video never went out oh no there was one more I was in the middle of Dartmoor and everything was going wrong I didn't have my pole I couldn't find anything to use as a pole because it's moorland um, couldn't find a flat spot my drone ditched somewhere <laughs> loads of stuff went wrong on that one it was a nice day out though still but um, yeah nice little setup I'm considering building a permanent shelter here so tomorrow I'll probably leave the um, bed I have permission on this land tidy up the fire and um, maybe come back and yeah build a proper lean-to just coming out of dusk now that kind of twilight and getting proper dark oh and this thing went out I might as well just chuck the uh, fat wood on the fire <laughs> Lost one. Nearly picked out with my bare hand. Here we go, they've cooled a little. Shell's coming off pretty nicely actually. It's nice to get that papery stuff off, but mmm. Mmm.
perfect. I've got some of this roasting oil, which is like infused oil, herbs and stuff, to go on this lovely looking ribeye steak. And of course, some salt and pepper. And there's the other side of that steak, been in the oil. Seasoned up nicely. Here we go. Okay, it's time to flip this. Gonna rest that steak for a few minutes, not too long because it's cold. <laughs> I don't want it to cool down too much, just to rest and uh, we'll get to it. Quite hungry, it's, uh, I don't know, nearly an hour since I had the chestnuts. Still got the papery skin in my teeth. <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward to this steak. As you can probably tell, I've tried to go semi lightweight with my small pack and my small fire anchor from TJ and Metalworks and just the uh, blanket and that. Not too much. Okay, I can't wait any longer. <laughs> oh, it looks good. Ooh. Pink in the middle. Oh, yes. At home, I would have left this a lot longer to rest, but look at that. Mmm. Cannot be at stake. If I go simple on this one. Mmm. That's so good. <laughs> Ribeye is king of steaks. I'll stand by that. Absolutely the best. Most flavour. Just succulent. Oh, just so good. Try and get this going again. That's better. Just been chilling for a while, digesting mistake, watching the fire. This lantern's quite bright actually. <laughs> Much better than the torch I made. I'll have to see what other people have done with them. I think maybe smaller bits of fat wood. It's a cosy camp. I'm not going to have much room under here in the morning when it's pouring. We'll see how that goes. The uh, coat is gradually drying. <laughs> I'll probably put that on before I get in here, especially the um, hat. We'll see how we go. Probably have a hot chocolate though before I go to bed.
Ooh, smaller than my usual cup, so it's easier not to water it down too much. Oh, oh I needed that a little sweet kick. Fire's kind of starting to burn down there, and I think I might leave it. Just let it burn down. I mean, it's going to be put out by the rain when it comes. I think it's very early hours. Well, I've uh, dipped the tarp so when the rain comes it just drops off rather than pooling because of the angle of this log I'm under. And uh, time to say goodnight. Good morning. It's not actually super cold, which is nice. That probably means there's some cloud. <laughs> it was meant to be raining already, I think. It's about seven. But, uh, if we're gonna chill out for a minute, I might lay back down, let it get a tiny bit more light. But uh, I don't think it rained in the night. Doesn't look like it. So, yeah, it's been a hit hard today. We'll see how we do. use the flat pack X fire it's just so handy for the mornings especially as it could chuck it down any minute I can actually pick this up with my gloves and move it under the shelter and dump a couple of bits in there for the base throw in a fire lighter Seems to be getting a little bit lighter. I'm starting to feel the warmth of that already. Burns pretty quick when you cut the wood down that thin, but it's the best way to get a little fire pit going like that. <sighs> Sorry. Oh dear. No sign of rain yet. Got here some pancetta. We'll try something a bit different. <laughs> so I just need to try and get it into quite thin slices. Now a bushcraft knife is not usually the tool for the job for thin slices of food, but it's the tool I've got. Oh, it's 
not too bad. That's about what I was aiming for. can't find my bread roll. I think I didn't pack it. <laughs> so I think it's going to be a breakfast of pancetta and a cup of tea. <laughs> Protein. Just uh, letting that grill burn off a bit over the fire. Maybe get some coals. See how it goes. Make it easier for cooking without just loads of flames. I can just move the grill up. No rain yet. We could be lucky. I bet it comes down just as I'm about to take the tarp down. I'm going for it. Oh, it's hot. Almost looks like fake bacon, doesn't it? Pretty simple breakfast. Wow. <laughs> it's very salty. <laughs> it's got a lot of flavour. Wow. I was actually after the, um, I think it's called Nordic bacon. We can slice it off, but uh, they had the pancetta. I thought, why not? If I listen very carefully, I can hear tiny speckles on the uh, tarp. The rain is starting. Just moving my bag and stuff back under the tarp, just in case it. raining <laughs> it's quite nice actually I might sit here for a little while and just enjoy it I know it's just gonna get heavier and the tops gonna get wetter mm. maybe I shouldn't <laughs> I gotta wait for this uh, fire pit to cool down anyway I should empty it first but a uh, nice walk out <laughs> I definitely don't see this stopping. <laughs> it was pretty heavy there for a minute and uh, got visions of yesterday or day before. I'm just sorting out my sleep system and stuff, um, get all that packed away so I can just with the tarp, stick it in and um, run. <laughs> Alright guys, time for get out of here, it's pretty wet <laughs> and getting heavier and uh, yeah a little bit of a walk to the truck so I'll see you guys on the next one, goodbye. Don't forget to comment I'm in for your chance to win a BPS knife and check out the links below in the description. <laughs>